Hi there, I'm Josh Dumel, and today, it's all fair game. On today's show, Josh Dumel, from college quarterback to Hollywood star. My release was sort of like Drew Bledsoe. I just uh -huh. sort of slung it. Did you get more girls like this or as an actor? Coming out hot right out of the yeah. gate. Why he's calling out Draymond Green. I was pissed off at Draymond Green. I thought he was kind of a prick. I mean, that's what a real man would have done, in my opinion. Plus, find out which A-lister he beat out for male model of the year. So I would just like to point out that that is a deeper V-neck than I have ever <laughs> worn in my life. Did you wax for that? Appropriately humiliating, which uh, I thought it might be. It's all next on Fair Game. Welcome to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, and my guest today transformed from the scrappy quarterback of Minot State University to one of Hollywood's leading men, Josh Dumel. Yes. Uh, we've got to start high. Oh God, we've got to start there. with uh, this piece of gold. 1992 oh, yeah. to 94, Minot's starting quarterback. Uh, I notice a mullet, but what's the rest that's of a, the that's scouting a, report? Yeah, no, no, that was a full-on mullet. A full-on mullet. It's a little. It's actually grown out a little bit on top. I used to be real short up here, like short mm -hmm. up on the top, and then real it's like long, a side part real mullet. long, locky in the back. It was How were you as a quarterback? I was just amazing. Like what? What would the other teams see in you? What did they have to prepare no, for? No, I was I was average. I was a passer. I was a drop back passer. Okay. I didn't run much. A lot of rollout. It was like at the time it was West Coast offense type stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of rollout, sort of. And then they, we had another quarterback who was more of a, a runner than me. So basically, I just avoided contact at all costs. You were like the pretty boy quarterback. Exactly. Did you get more <laughs> girls like this as a college quarterback or as an actor? Again, you're coming out hot right out of the you gate. Know. <laughs> I, I saw this picture, and that's what I wanted to know. Like, does this well, I mean, not, work for Look you? how innocent that kid was. It doesn't look innocent. By the your way, tongue is halfway out of I, your mouth. I was a freshman then. Okay. I think. I think that was. I think that was my freshman haircut. Okay. Are you uh, dodging my question? Do do I did I get did more you girls get more then? Girls? And we, let, let's Listen, say, first of all, I'm in LA now, and I was yeah. in North Dakota then. So you're saying you get more just, girls just, now as an just actor? Just by proxy, there was few, very few girls there, just because there's very few people in North Dakota. Okay, so you're going to dodge my questions I'm dodge all day. That this one. is good to know. We'll come back to this one. <laughs> was there an athlete that you tried to emulate? Your favorite one, your the person you idolized. Yeah, uh, I was a big Troy Aikman fan. Big Troy Aikman fan growing up. Uh, I guess my release was sort of like Drew Bledsoe. I didn't really, I wasn't like Drew Brees who was up here. I uh -huh. sort of slung it a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I grew up, Aikman was probably the guy that I looked up to the most. It's not a bad person to no. try to be like. You also have these things called the buddy games mm -hmm. that you do with your friends. And it feels so secretive. Like, where do you do this? How often? Who's invited? So the buddy games started probably 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my friend Bob Schwartz started it. We were... I don't know, I think we started while we were in college, and, and it just has sort of become bigger and bigger every year. And so what we do is we, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a reason for the guys to get together every year and mm -hmm. just, you know, re reunite. It's guys only. Yeah, but, you know, wives and they parents and, and stuff you. come and watch sometimes. Okay. You know, especially on the, at the last day of events, they come. Oh, but it's, it's a multi-day thing. It, yeah, it's a few days. Okay. But it's mostly just the guys. Okay. And we try to keep it just the guys. And it's, it's you know, a, a crazy mental and physical competitions for, like, Like, this weekend. is real. It's oh, not it's just, like, real. flip cup. No, no, it's all real. Like I mean, American Ninja Warriors? Mm, not quite that extreme, but I mean, we always do something that's really crazy. Like last year, we had this giant hill that they put Visqueen down, and they put made these giant painted these giant garbage pails and did like human bowling down that. How much drinking is involved? None. None? You used to get me to go down a hill in a garbage. No, there's 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 a fair amount of drinking that, that happens. Yeah. Okay. I hope has anyone ever gotten hurt? Uh, yeah, one guy threw a hip one year. I was like, are we getting that old where we're starting to throw hips? I heard you did an audition that didn't go very well, and I'm curious why and what happened. It was for Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah, it was terrible. Maybe this is why I don't want to do it. It went horribly. Just put a bad taste in your mouth. So I was doing a movie with uh, Hilary Swank okay. and Emmy Rossum about, uh, and, and Hilary had Lou Gehrig's disease, and she was my wife, and it was a really depressing movie and we had just finished shooting the most depressing scene of her dying and it was just like I just remember leaving there going oh my god this is just such a downer and then I had to go do 
an audition for Guardians of the Galaxy, like r raced over to do that. And I just, it was the worst audition I think I've ever done. You still have to audition? Well, yeah, for movies like that, yeah? sure. Yeah, and ultimately they made the right choice with Chris Pratt anyway, so I'm not that upset about it. Well, but it could have been you. Could you tell them like, hey, I was in a bad place, I want to do this again? They don't want to hear that. that they don't want to hear that. I feel like it's you. Sometimes you, you just got to take it on the chin, you know, sometimes. It's not their fault that I was not as prepared as I should have been. That's a very mentally. noble thing for you to say. I want to talk about Fergie for a second because okay. at the All-Star Game, her national anthem performance, I heard that you called her afterwards and you guys talked and you kind of, you defended her, which was really cool. Uh, What's the relationship like with you guys? Are you still the person that she calls when something like that happens? I actually called her. Yeah. Because I don't think she realized, people were calling me going, what just happened? Right. I was like, what do you mean? I was, I was driving back from the airport when I got there. I was getting a phone oh, call. so you didn't see it live. I didn't see it live. And so... She was at the game just watching it, and I was like, are you all right? She's like, yeah, I'm having oh, a great she time. she didn't know yet. But listen, that girl can, she, I've seen her sing that song several times. She just crushes it. Yeah. I don't know what she was doing that day, but, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing that made me upset was that she was taking a lot of uh, really cruel sort of comments People, yeah. are, people are really trolling. I was pissed off at Draymond Green, first of all. I think he owed her an apology. I thought he was kind of a prick. For Why what, specifically for Just because he knew the camera was on him and he snickered about it. I just thought that if he would have been a real man, he would have at least called her and said, listen, I'm sorry that I caused all this. Oh, so he never reached out? No, of course he did didn't. Did you? Did you try to get that message to him? No. Okay, well maybe he's watching now and he can apologize yeah. to her. I mean, that's what a real man would have done, in my opinion. So you still feel really, like, you, you protect her sometimes. She's the mother yeah. of your child. You're, you're, she's your guys my, relationship she's my baby mama. She is. Uh, your son is growing up in L.A. You are a Vikings fan, and Fergie owns part of the Dolphins. So where is his football loyalty going to lie if you had your way? Oh, he's going to be a Vikings fan. Are you sure? Absolutely. How do you make that happen? I just drill it into his head every day. <laughs> the Vikings? But he's five. How do you I do know. that to a five-year-old? That, that's what Packer fans do to their, their kids. Why can't I brainwash my child into becoming a Vikings fan? How do you fan? brainwash your child at five? You just sit, that's what you got to do to You just sit down and make him watch Vikings. I want to I wanna watch Vikings games with my son as he grows up. I, it might backfire on me. Okay. Is Fergie cool with that? Uh, yeah. She'll, he'll, he'll still root for the Dolphins. Oh, he can, too. he can support both teams. Yeah. AFC, NFC, it's all good. Is he playing organized sports? Uh, he's playing t-ball now. Okay. He's playing t-ball. He's in jujitsu. He just got his first stripe on his belt. I also heard that you had a very unique way of teaching him to run the bases. So I had a, a, a this is, I, I just got my new house. I had no furniture. Mm -hmm. So I had a big space for like a little baseball field. So I Inside your house? Well, a tiny little baseball field. It's like a big living room. Uh -huh. And so I taped bases on the floor and I was trying to get him to understand the basics of baseball. So I set the tee up. I put an M and M at first base, second base, and third base. And if he could hit the ball past me, he would run. To, and I, would, he, he would run to first base. If he got it really past me, he'd get to second. Oh, so he's motivated by chocolate. By, by candy. I like that. Hey, it's bribery. Whatever it takes. I'm motivated by candy too. That's that's a good way to do it. And when we come back, it's time for first and ten with Josh Jamal. We'll be right back. Next, first time fired from a job. Will and Grace. Why were you fired? That's a big one. That's coming up. Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, hanging out with America's sweetheart, Josh Jumel. Okay, so this is how this works. I'm gonna list off some things having to do with firsts, and then you have to tell me the first thing that comes to mind, okay? Okay. First time fired from a job. Will and Grace. Why were you fired? That's a big one. I don't think I was very good in the read-through the day before they hired me, and then I went to the read-through, and I guess I wasn't funny. Oh, you funny didn't even make it on an episode. No. First kiss. Paige Adams. Good memory. I remember them all. All of them? How many are well, there? I mean, you, those first ones are, are really sort of impressionistic, you know. How old were you? I was a seventh or eighth grader. Okay, like 13? Yeah. First time you were intimidated by a co-star? James Caan. Why? Because he's James Caan. He was Sonny, Sonny Corleone, and he beats people up for a living. You thought he would beat you up? Well, he, that's just kind of his, okay. his rep. But he was the sweetest guy ever. Oh, teddy bear. First song you go to for karaoke? Africa by Toto. Can you give us some? I bless the waves <laughs> down in Africa. 
No, 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 please don't make me do that. Okay, I hope you're better. I need to hear it. I need to hear it. Yeah, yeah. And I need to warm my vocals up. Sure. Otherwise, it would have been great. I understand. First thing you think of when you look in the mirror. You're getting really gray, dude. That's what you say? Have you ever considered dyeing it? I did for a little bit, and I just don't care. I like. The salt and pepper look. I think that's good for a guy. Well, I'm growing it out f for a thing right now, so it's like this is even, this is really great. First time you were really upset you didn't get a role you wanted. I just, I don't know if it was the first time, but one that really hurt was a movie called uh, John Carter of Mars. Okay. Which turned out to be a flop, so thank God so I you're didn't fine. get it. Why were you upset you didn't get it? Because I thought I, 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 thought I could have got it. I thought it was, I, it was right there. Was that the kind of role you were looking for? That message I really I love the book I love the director okay and it was a really cool story and I just thought that I was right for it and I didn't get it and it was you know it's just this this is this is a game where you got to have a thick skin it is for sure first thing anyone should do if they visit North Dakota go to Theodore Roosevelt National Park and see the Badlands oh that sounds cool beautiful first thing you would do as NFL commissioner change over time to what I like the college the college style better. Really? Yeah. Or just let them play out a play it play it out. What I don't like is the if you score a touchdown, the other team doesn't get a chance to okay. get the ball. And also think, why does baseball have after 160 games mm -hmm. a wild card that's one game elimination? Why don't they let them play three games? I agree. You, with why that. don't you play 160 games then to play Do one game? Do you watch that much baseball? No. Okay. But I would watch that. But I would argue baseball can get a little boring. It There's does, a lot but, of games. But, so if it's a one game thing, that makes it really interesting. I just want to I see. I thought you were more of a fan. First word that comes to mind when I say Mark Wahlberg. Good dude. Solid dude. Have you tried his hamburgers? I have. They're good. He brought them to set one day. Oh, that was nice. Can you mm -hmm. bring them here? They're really good. Yeah. First person people usually mistake you for? Timothy Oliphant. That was quick. Do you want to hear a funny Timothy Oliphant story? Yes, I do. So I went to Clayton Kershaw's uh, ping, pong. ping pong thing mm -hmm. two years ago. And I've, I'd gotten Timothy Oliphant a lot. And I did this little interview on the, the blue carpet with one of the sports writers for the LA Times. Yes. Ten minutes we're talking. At the end he says, um, so how many more years of uh, Justified are you guys going to do? Ah. I go, wait, you thought, you think that I'm... I'm you should have just played it off like that. And and not only that, but then he shows up at the thing that night, and we'd never met, and we've always heard that we we look alike. And so he has me take a we, we we talk, and he has me take a photo with his family. And what do I get at Christmas time? Several months later, a Christmas card from Timothy Oliphant with me Aww. and his family. I just thought it was funny that, that is he would very send a Christmas card out with my picture of his family. I think that's you know Christmas. Who even keeps Christmas cards really? I do. I put them all up. Like on a wreath. Yeah. No, on a big wall. On a wall. Uh -huh. Okay. That does it for First in 10. When we come back, more with Josh Jumel. Don't move. Later, find out which A-lister Josh beat out for Male Model of the Year. That is a deeper V-neck than I have ever <laughs> worn in my life. I was 22. What do you want from me? That's later. Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy with Josh Dumel, and I want to talk about sports for a second. You are a big Minnesota sports fan yeah. and a Viking season ticket holder. And so when Josh Dumel shows up, like the fans around, what do they say? Sit down. You're you're you're. They don't care that you're Josh Dumel. Yeah. Okay. No. You were also at the NFC Championship. Yes. Uh, we share this in common that I'm not thrilled with the Eagles right now. My team is the Patriots. Okay. Were they heckling you? They're pretty they were awful? terrible to me. Okay, what'd they, they do? They were terrible to me. Little old ladies were flipping me off as I was leaving the stadium. Kids were elbowing me. I Little like, ladies? And, the, and it, it, they'd already beat us 38-7. to 7. I was like, what more do you want from me? I mean, it'd be one thing if we went in and beat them or if the game was close. Were you wearing something ridiculous, like us. a ridiculous Vikings jersey? I think I had my, I think I had my Vikings hat on. Okay. Would you rather win a Golden Globe or for the Vikings to win a Super Bowl? Hmm. I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Golden Globe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell the Vikings that you said that. Hey, I want them to win a Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. But you'd rather have a but Golden I'm, Globe it's, first. Look, look. What would you rather do? Would you rather have your Patriots win one or you win an Emmy for this show? Good call. Very easy. But you know what I'll say? Hey, well, the what's the answer? I would rather win an Emmy, but the Patriots have already won a lot of Super Bowls. So I'm cool with yeah. them. And also, 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really have like that kind of loyalty for the Patriots. I'm a kind of lighthearted mm. Patriots fan. Would okay. you consider you're a diehard? Vikings yeah, I love fan. my Vikings. But you just would rather you have a Golden Globe. <laughs> it's time for something now that we're going to call interview tap out, and here's how it works. Josh and I are going to go back and forth asking each other questions, and like the show name, everything is fair game, even if it makes either of us a little uncomfortable. If one of us doesn't want to answer, then we can tap out at any point by hitting the bell, but whoever does hit it, they lose, and no one likes a loser. Okay. Right, right. Oh, we got a bell? We have a bell. Here's Man, the bell. Man, you guys spare no expense. So, no, no expense. And it matches here. your pants. Thank you. That was on purpose. Usually the bell is a different color. Today we chose it to be red. All are right. you ready for this? Yep. Do you have your questions ready? I do. Okay, ladies are first, so I'm going to ask you the first question. Josh, are you currently dating anyone right now, and what is their name? Uh, no. Okay. Christine, what's, are you currently dating anyone right now, and what's their name? No. Okay. Uh, what is the last lie? <laughs> your face. It looks so cynical. Uh, what's the last lie you told to get out of something? This show last week. You lied to me? No, I didn't lie. <laughs> what did you say? I just couldn't do it. I tried to do it, but I couldn't make it work. So I just said, just try but to But you didn't it lie. Me. You said, no, my schedule's really busy. Work it, this it, out with my publicist. It was. Okay, that's not a lie. Well, but I mean, I could have. I could have. So you just didn't. I really could have, but it just would have been too much. I wanted. That's why we pushed it to this week. Thanks you for coming. The, today. You wanted me to be honest. That's the truth. Okay. Thanks for lying to me. <laughs> nice. Christine, have you ever dated a professional athlete? <laughs> I have been on a date with a professional athlete, yes. Okay. What was your worst on-screen kiss? My worst on-screen kiss? My mother on all my children. Wait, what? You had to kiss your mom? Well, yeah. We were tricking the audience into thinking this woman had a younger boyfriend. Uh-huh. But it turned out that I was actually just her son. And we didn't actually... It wasn't just like, her it son. Wasn't, it wasn't a real kiss. It was just more like a... You know, like a little peck on the lips. So it was weird because of the character situation, yeah. not because like the kiss was bad. Yeah. All right. I'm really good at sneaking around these questions. You're never going to tap out, are you? <laughs> okay. There you go. You don't want us to know. You got me. That's fine. We've got lots more with Minot State University Hall of Famer, Josh Dumel, when we get back. Next, we put Josh's acting skills to the test. You just found out I was still alive after being gone for five years. <laughs> That's coming up. Tomorrow, Nastia Lucan. My heart broke when yeah. the Larry Nasser stuff mm -hmm. started coming out. I can't believe that they had to go through that. People will say, like, no way, like, your dad didn't know he was there. That's disgusting. Welcome back to Fair Game. I'm Christine Leahy, hanging out with 2002 Daytime Emmy Award winner for Best Supporting Actor, Josh Dumel. Oh, you did your research. Yeah, I did do some research, and you beat out Mark Consuelos. I did? That was a big, you don't even remember? I don't remember that. I watched the footage of when you won this award, and mm. by the way, they put you in the way, 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 way back. Yeah. They had to play that music for a very long time for you to walk all the way up there. I, I don't think they thought you would win. Did you think that you would win? I didn't think that I would win. And not only that, did I, part of the reason it took me so long to get up there, I ran all the way back to, my mom was there. Oh, I gave her a big hug so and I came back. So you weren't sitting in the back. I was sitting f close to the front, but the first, oh. the first thing I did is I ran all the way, my mom oh, had come. sweet. And I remember Dick Clark going, uh, and from now on, could everybody please just go straight to the stage? Everybody please just go <laughs> straight to the stage. So. You ruined it for everybody. I did, I did. Okay, uh, one other thing that you won. Do you know what this is? Oh God. Do you have any idea? I probably do. <laughs> Don't tell uh, me. 1997 oh, IMTA Male Model of the Year. <laughs> um, this is you uh, and a, a man known as Chris Kutcher at the time. He is now Ashton Kutcher. Uh, first, I would just like to point out that that is a deeper V-neck than I have ever <laughs> worn in my life. Did you wax for that? <laughs> Did you shave? <laughs> I was 22. What do you want from me? 22. God. So we are in a house right now, if you haven't noticed. It kind of resembles a soap opera house. So I would like to give you some situations and maybe you can teach me how to do the appropriate soap opera actor response. Okay. okay? Sure. I want to see yours first. You just found out I was still alive after being gone for five years. You give can, me the facial. Can you come from somewhere? Here. <laughs> Are you alive? I don't leave my eyes. 
That's what you would do? Yeah. Okay. This next one, you got to teach me how to do it. Don't question me. I want a daytime Emmy. <laughs> yes, you did. I shouldn't question you. How about uh, I'll ask you what you would do? Okay. Let's see. I want to see what I want to see what your reaction well, is. I'm not an actor. I don't have. Yeah, but a, this this will be like the actor's an acting workshop. Emmy. Yeah, this will be like the workshop. Okay. This will be your. This will be your. Okay, Josh, start. direct me. Okay. We're in a house that could resemble a soap opera. <laughs> You're right? just reading my cards. You just got out of a coma after sleeping for five years straight, and Tom Brady is still quarterbacking the New England Patriots. That's good. I thought is that, that was good? good. Yeah. Okay. That was real. So you that don't was have real. to. I want to feel a little bit more. I want, I want you to feel it a little bit more okay. in the beginning. Let it, let it affect like, you. Oh, I'm Let waking up from my you. coma. Like, okay. Yeah, you wait. Got to be waking up from your coma. Okay. okay. You just got up. You just woke up from five years in a coma. Tom Brady is still quarterbacking the New England Patriots. Well, we, there's, there's <laughs> something to work with there. That there's is why you have with. an Emmy. You look. You and look. I don't. You look the part. Th thank you. Look you. The part. I, I look like I just came out of a coma. No, no. You look the Thanks. part of. You look the part of a, of, a, of a soap opera star. Josh, thank you. This is thank you. This, this has was, been uh, this uh, interesting. Appropriately humiliating, which um, I thought it might be. I'm I'm really glad, Josh. Thank you so much. I'm Christine Leahy, and I'll see you next time on Fair Game.